Hi there, Mr. Sutton here with the Precal Honors 2-4 Extra Practice Number 1 Solutions on Graphing Polynomials in Intercept Form. To graph this polynomial, let's start by getting the roots, or x-intercepts. So that's going to be whatever zeroes out each of these factors, the x value. So for this first factor, we have an x value of x equals negative 6. And then for this one, we have negative 2, followed by 3 and 8. So let's graph those out. We have negative 6 somewhere over here to the left. Negative 2 is uh, closer to the y-axis. 3 is on the right side of the y-axis, and 8 is further out still. We also need the y-intercept. So uh, if we plug 0 in for all the x's, we essentially are looking at 2 times 6 times 2 times negative 3 times negative 8. All that stuff multiplied together. So what do we have here? This is going to be uh, 2 times 6 is 12, times another 2 is 24, times negative 3, that's negative 72. Uh, negative 8 times that gives us a positive. Uh, 8 times 72, basically. Well, 8 times 70, that would be 560. 8 times 2 is 16. Uh, so this should be 576. Yep. And that's going to be somewhere up here. And you could have used a calculator, but hey, we're here now. So uh, let's look at our end behavior. For that, we look at what happens if we disregard the constants in there. So we basically have a positive. We have an x times x times x times x going on. Looking at the degree, if we were to expand this and put it in standard form. Um, so this is x to the fourth. Basically, we have a positive x to an even power for our highest term, for our degree. So that means this is going to behave like a positive x squared, which is to say it's going to be a parabola opening up, at least if you look at the end behavior. So that means we are starting above the x-axis, and we should be ending above the x-axis. Now, in terms of what's happening in between, all these factors have first power on them. So that means these are all single roots, which means we're going to behave like a line at all the roots and cross through all of them. So putting it all together, we're starting above the x-axis and crossing, crossing, and crossing, and crossing again. And we're ending above the x-axis, just like our end behavior suggests we should. To graph this polynomial, let's start by getting the roots, x-intercepts. So that's what zeroes out each factor. This x is giving us a root of x equals 0. x plus 3 gives us negative 3. And then x plus 6, we have a negative 6 for that one. Graphing those out, we've got negative 6 somewhere over here to the left. Negative 3 is a little closer to the y-axis. And 0 is right on the origin there. So now getting the y-intercept, if I plug 0 in for all the x's, we've basically got 0 times 3 times 6, which comes out to 0, which shouldn't surprise us because this origin spot here, this is an x and a y-intercept at the same time. So now looking at our end behavior, we've got an x times an x times an x, if we were to put that in standard form, uh, basically leaving us with an x cubed as our highest term. So we basically have a positive x to an odd power. This means that we're going to behave like an upward sloping line, like an x, y equals x. So we're going to start below the x-axis and end above it. In terms of root behavior, We've got single factors, at least single powers on our factors. So these are all single roots, meaning we're going to cross through all of them, just like a regular line. So starting below the x-axis, we're going to cross through negative 6, come back, cross through negative 3, come back, cross through the origin, and we end above the x-axis, just like the end behavior says we will. For this polynomial, we're going to start the graphing process by finding the roots, whatever zeroes out each of these factors. So we've got negative 2 for that cubic root, and that's going to be a triple root. And then we have 5 for that other one. Graphing those out, negative 2 is somewhere over here to the left. 5 is somewhere over here to the right. And we need the y-intercept as well. So if I plug in 0 for x, I basically got negative 2 cubed times negative 5. So negative 8 times negative 5 is positive 40, which is somewhere up here. Now for the end behavior, we have a negative x cubed times an x. 
That's negative x to the fourth, so we have a negative x to an even power. That means our graph is going to behave in the long term like a negative x squared, like an upside down parabola. So we're starting and ending below the x-axis. For the root behavior, we've got a negative 2 we said was a triple root. So we're going to flatten and go through at negative 2, like an x cubed. And we have a single factor here giving us that root of 5. So we're just going to cross 5 just like a regular line. So starting below the x-axis, we flatten, go through here, and cross. And we're ending below the x-axis, just like we said we should. On this one, we're going to start by getting the roots. So what zeroes out our factors, this x squared gets zeroed out if x equals 0. So that's one of our x-intercepts. And for this other square factor, we've got 3 for that root. Putting those on our graph, we have 0 is at the origin. 3 is somewhere to the right over here. And now the origin here, this is also a y-intercept, but if you weren't sure, you could plug in 0 for x. You basically have 0 squared times negative 3 squared, which does indeed come out to 0. For the end behavior now, we have an x squared times an x squared. That's going to give us a positive x to the fourth, so a positive x to an even power. Uh, that means this is going to behave like an x squared, like an upward-facing parabola. So we're ending... Uh, be, we're actually starting and ending above the x-axis on this one. For the root behavior, it looks like 0 and 3 coming from these square factors are both double roots, so we're going to be bouncing at both 0 and 3. So putting it all together, we start above the x-axis, and we bounce down at 0, come back up, come back down, and bounce off of 3, and we end above the x-axis just as our end behavior says we will. To graph this polynomial, let's begin by getting the roots. So for this x out here, what zeroes this out is going to be x equals 0. And then zeroing out this x plus 8, that's going to be negative 8, followed by positive 4. Graphing all these out, we've got negative 8 is the far left one over here. 0 is at the origin, and 4 is somewhere to the right of the y-axis. Now for the y-intercept, well, we already have that. Uh, and the origin spot here counts as both an x and a y-intercept, but if you weren't sure, you could plug in 0 for all the x's. So we would have negative 0 times 8 times negative 4, which, because of this 0, all comes out to 0. Now for the end behavior, we have a negative x times x times x. That's a negative x cubed. In general, it's a negative x to an odd power. So this is going to behave like a negative x, like a line sloping down. So we're going to start above the x-axis and end below it. Now for the behavior in between, these three roots here are all single roots because they all have first power on the factors. So we're going to cross through all of those zeros. So we're starting above, crossing through negative 8, coming back, crossing through the origin, crossing through 4, and we end below the x-axis just like we should. To graph this polynomial, let's start by finding the roots. That's what zeroes out each of these factors. For the x squared, that's an x value of 0. For the x plus 4, that's x equals negative 4. And now we'll just graph those. So negative 4 is somewhere over here. We also have 0, the origin. Uh, that last one is also going to be a y-intercept. It's on both axes at the same time. But if you weren't sure, we can plug 0 in and get 0 squared times 4 for a, a y-intercept of 0. Now for the end behavior, we have to multiply our x's together. So we have an x squared times an x. That gives us a positive x cubed. In general, we have a positive x to an odd power. So that's going to behave like a y equals x, like a line. So upward sloping line here. That means that we're starting below the x-axis and ending above. Now in between at these roots, at negative 4, that came from this x plus 4, which is a single root. So we're going to cross through negative 4. And 0 came from this x squared, so that's a double root. That means we're going to bounce at 0. So starting below the x-axis, we cross through 4, bounce at 0, and we end above the x-axis just like our end behavior says we will.